Welcome to the Brand Theory Podcast, the podcast for helping you uncover your passion, realize your purpose, and take the aligned action. Together, we're going to prove the theory that when we live our lives on brand, the possibilities become limitless. I'm your host, Jenny Marchesi, branding expert and business coach. Let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of the Brand Theory Podcast, where we bring you tips, tricks, and stories to help you stay in alignment with who you truly are and build the brand of your dreams. So today we're talking to a very special guest, Johnny Holstein. But before we jump into telling you all about that, I just wanted to offer you a quick little story. I know we've been talking a lot about story marketing and making sure your brand is a well-rounded brand. And I want to give you a story of one of my clients who has successfully done this, who we worked together for, gosh, I think we're going on about 10 months now. And recently, probably about three or four months ago, she landed her dream client, a very big company who is just totally in line with everything that her ideal client is. And the thing that attracted this client to my client the most was her branding and how different it was than everybody else in that industry. Not that nobody else is doing what she's doing, but nobody else is doing it in a way that she's doing it. Now, without giving names here, I know that's a little cryptic of an example, but this is just a piece of encouragement to anybody who is listening who may feel like They're not sure if it's even working or if anything that they're doing is doing anything. If they're just feel like they're just guessing it at this point and just trying things. Um, That's exactly how she felt for months and months going on a year. And we worked together very, very closely um, improving this, enhancing this and really aligning her brand with exactly who she is so that there's no miscommunication in the expectations of when potential clients come to her, they know exactly what they're getting and they are getting the true and the real and the the authentic, the on-brand version of this particular client in every sense of the word from their first conversation to the final deliverables. They're getting exactly what they saw through her branding and through her messaging and her marketing. So keep going guys, stay true to yourself, stay true to what is on-brand for you, your your definition of on brand because it will work. And if you need any help with that, I am always here. My brand audits are up for grabs as we move into spring. It's the perfect time to take a look at your messaging, your branding as a whole, and your marketing practices, and really just making sure it is that well rounded but authentic brand to yourself. So, moving into today's episode, like I said, we are talking to Johnny Holstein, who is located in Phoenix, Arizona. He started South Mountain Messaging to help brands figure out what their customers need to hear to buy and cut out unnecessary marketing language. He is a story brand certified guide and loves the story brand framework because it can help entrepreneurs and solopreneurs get off the ground and help bigger companies get more out of their marketing dollars. He has been married for two and a half years to his wife, Lindy, who he met on his college track team. They have two boxers and are expecting a baby girl this month. And in fact, I think I saw on Instagram that they had said baby girl last week. So congratulations to you two. And I will get into this episode without any further ado because it is two brand geeks geeking out about branding and storytelling. Enjoy it. Welcome to the show, Johnny. Yeah, Danielle. Thanks so much for having me. You, fun fact, you are the first male guest I've had on the Brand Theory Podcast. No kidding. I'm Yeah, honored. not that I was like <laughs> exclusive or anything. I just, my niche was very, my network was very female based. And now that I'm expanding, I'm so excited that you're the, the first male we're having on here. Hey, yeah, point, point one for the boys. So point one for I'm the excited. Boys. I'm honored. <laughs> um, so you heard a little bit about you inside your intro, but I always like to ask, tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words and how you got to where you are today. Sure. So non-work wise, live in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, been here since 2015 when I moved out here for college. Um, live with my wife, Lindy. We've been married a couple years and that is, we're expecting our, our first child this month. So that's exciting stuff. Um, that's that is super exciting. 
Yeah, thanks. That's the the skinny on non work stuff. Work wise, um, worked for myself since college, um, doing various um, marketing related stuff. Um, then kind of got to start with managing or fielding some brand deals for uh, a couple athletes, and then a one like B, I, I won't say A list, but like B list reality TV star. That was a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, did the kind of the story brand process with one client. And from there, I kind of committed my career to doing that full time. So we'll talk more about that. But that is, that's my journey. So that's about the last, you know, two and a half years. And becoming an entrepreneur, was that something you always had envisioned for yourself? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I've always been an entrepreneur. I've had have held jobs here and there, but for the most part, like even in high school, I, I mowed lawns in, in Colorado where I grew up. So that was my, I was always, I think I always just was making more than like minimum wage. And like in high school, you make minimum wage usually. And I was making yeah. m- more mowing lawns. So I just kind of got sucked into that world. It was hard to ever go back to a job. So I always, um, not that I have anything against the the traditional like, nine to five world. I think there's so many great options there, but for me, I've always worked for myself and that's always been the goal. Yeah. I love that. So tell us a little bit how you help your clients. Like what's your, what's your offers for your business right now? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, the, my primary offer is I help, I help businesses, small to medium size, reorient their marketing message around what their customers need to hear. So we help flip the switch from a brand saying what they think is important about their product to saying what their customer needs to hear. Um, And the main way I do that is through using the story brand framework where we kind of write a story about the the client's customer and say, okay, Mm -hmm. if this is their story, how do we get them from A to Z? Um, So that comes through messaging audits. Sometimes I just look at, look at their stuff and give feedback. Other times I'm writing website copy. Other times we're creating a messaging framework that they can take and use in-house to create their website copy or marketing materials. Yeah. So I love that book. I love that everything it's about that framework framework. And I'm in the middle of launching a program right now called the brand rescue. Um, definitely pulled some inspiration from that. And it's definitely flipped mm-hmm. the switch for me when I read it a couple of years ago and I've read it multiple times since. Um, yeah. So in this program, I'm, we're doing exactly that, like putting ourselves inside instead of me just sitting in front of a computer teaching you these things, I'm putting myself in your position, in the customer's position, in the person who's struggling with this particular problem inside their business. And we're playing it out through a CV show, like through a, a mockumentary mm-hmm. type of deal. Um, but this is, this is kind of where it all started. So I'm very, very interested in how you kind of came across it, what your initial take was on it and how you've just completely run with it. I know that's a very big question. So give us yeah. as much as you can with that, but definitely interested in hearing your take on it. Yeah, all the way. So for me, I will say like the story brand process has been really life-changing, not to be dramatic in figuring out... Um, kind of what I want to do because I had started out, like I said, fielding, fielding like brand deals for this like reality TV star and then some athletes and stuff. And I just, it was just there. It wasn't very clear. There was a lot of, you know, how much is this worth? How much is your social following actually worth? You know, what will you get paid to post this thing? And just a ton of back and forth. It wasn't very clear and there wasn't a real sense of direction. And I felt like I wanted to do something that was just like easy to understand help people think about their business in a way that actually inspires them to like keep working on their business. Um, And we can talk more about that element too, but ultimately I ended up having a client who needed some website work done and a good friend of mine, his name is Christian Fagerlin. He put me onto the story brand framework. He gave me the book and walked me through it. And we were going to do it for my existing company at the time and which was the management company. And I had, I just went through this process and I was like, okay, all I want to ever do is apply this method forever, like to other businesses, like forget doing it once for my own company. This is all that I want to do forever. So that's what got me into it. I read the book. I did the framework and I was like, that's it. You know, this is all I want to do. So for me, it was a gift from having that landed right in my lap. And I was like, this is where I want to go with it. And then from there, um, took me a little time to like really make it, uh, 
my full-time thing. But then um, once I did, it's been all, all I'm doing. So that's kind of how I discovered it, just like everybody else, you know, reading the book and then getting on fire about it. Yeah. And what I love about it is it, it does present these principles like you can plug and play in your own way, but then you can also just take them and completely run with it in a completely different way in the sense that it, it pulls that inspiration, right? But it pulls it allows you that I felt like it just completely creatively opened up my mind to a completely different way of thinking about marketing. Mm -hmm. And it was exactly what I was feeling like I was missing. A hundred percent. It's, it's so, it's almost too simple. Like it's, oh, Mm. it's so simple that everybody can understand it. And the biggest red flag for me is when, is if someone doesn't, doesn't get it and isn't excited about it that means there's like other stuff going on that they don't want to they don't want it like help they don't really want help so when you get someone that reads the framework with an open mind and they're like really needing help their business it is it is the most like profound experience of of not only realizing okay i have direction in my marketing but also realizing and this is my favorite part of it realizing what i do is actually like good for the world, right? Like it solves someone's problem. It helps someone get from A to Z and, oh my gosh, I've always known this, but now I have a way to communicate it and not only communicate it, but communicate it in a way that like reads my customer's mind. And in doing that, you build trust and, and, you know, turn them into a customer. So Yeah. yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is you sit down with people who they read the book for the first time, their mind's going a million directions. And then you walk them through the process and it's like, it's almost like therapeutic, right? Like they, they look at it and they're like, oh my gosh, like I do have a good business after all. Cause a lot of people come <laughs> to you just God. empty. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think too, um, there's so many strategies that we can test and try as business owners and we do it. We, we see it's working for someone else. So we automatically want to try it. And it's, I feel like it's only in that natural babies entrepreneur step that we take. But this is really a formula that is fits all because it is so customizable and so easy to apply to your specific business and your specific customers, which is probably my favorite part about it. But um, so can you tell us more about this, the story framework in the sense of what does that mean inside our business? How are we connecting through stories with our customers? Yeah, so the idea of using story to connect with our customers is based on a few ideas. Um, The first one being that the best way to hold somebody's attention is through a story. So if, if the reason we daydream throughout the day is because we are telling ourselves a story about what, what we're going to do in the future always. So if you're bored in a situation and you start daydreaming, it's because your, your mind is craving a story. So Mm. if you can, if you can use your marketing to tell a story and not most importantly, not your own story, but the story of the person consuming your marketing materials, that is going to help them defend or resist against the desire to daydream. And then they're going to dive right into your marketing and they're going to engage with it because they're, they are daydreaming about what their life looks like on the other side of doing business with you. And that's a powerful tool. It helps, it stops them from disengaging with our marketing if we can lock them into a story. Yeah. Something that we're doing inside this program too is not to keep talking about that. It's just because no. the, it all, it all calls in um, yeah. people, my audience and myself. So, you know, we attract people who are like us are obsessed with TV, right? Whether that's reality or the, the hottest drama on, on TV right now, it's just, we're obsessed with those stories, but it's not, you become invested with the characters. You, you become invested with what happens to them, but you're becoming invested in the brand story that is the TV show. So if we can create that same kind of obsession through our marketing and the same kind of attraction of, I can't wait to see what happens next inside these problems you're presenting to your audience, you, you got them, you got them hooked. Exactly. If you can, if you can agitate the pain point of your customer yes. through a story, they will do anything to, to solve that pain point. So yeah. for like, like TV, for example, my wife and I are probably our favorite show right now is Love is Blind. And that's the one we've just recently binged. And I'm a shameless like junk TV fan. So um, if you can, like the major issue for them is that what's it, what's at stake essentially. And like in the story, the story problem is will these people, of course, of course, will they find love? Like that's the big one, the overarching one. But the real one is like, will they like the way that their spouse looks when they see them for the first time? 
So you create like these open story loops in your marketing. Just like when we see an open story loop in a TV show of, oh my gosh, this guy just proposed without seeing this girl before. We really crave the next scene. So our marketing can do the same thing. We can, we can basically just agitate a problem as if we're sticking a knife in and then twist it and agitate it even further through the words we use in a story type format, making our customer crave the next scene, aka crave a relationship with your brand. And, and this and the solution you offer the perfect solution i love it so how can we start if someone's listening to this how how can they start adapting these storytelling principles today yeah the number one thing that you need to do really to start implementing the story principles in your marketing is just is just have an open mind right you've got to be open to a paradigm shift in how you think about how you talk about your company so Stop talking about it from your perspective of what you think is important and really challenge yourself in every piece of content you create, every social media post, every time you post, update your website, and even how you talk about your company. Um, you need to challenge yourself to, before you ever say and do anything, place yourself in the shoes of your, com- and your, of, of your customer. And that's the first thing. So many people are, are um, just so hungry to share about their business that we end up doing it in a way that is really just... Um, very self-centered and we mean the best, but we just talk about us, 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 my product, my product, my product. The first thing to do is reorient your mindset into talking about purely the problems you solve and the challenges your customers are facing without even really mentioning the specifics of what you do. That's the first, very first step. Yeah. And then, are you still there? Did you freeze? Yeah. Yeah. You got me. Sorry. (laughs) Um, Okay. So perfect. So start thinking about the customers and it's hard guys. It's I, sometimes you don't even realize that we're doing it right. And so that other person kind of comes in and says, all right, let's tweak this section. So if that, if you feel like that's you and you, you need some other perspective, even if it's like a friend who is also in business, just takes a look at your website or reach out to, you know, resources such as Johnny here, who can help you do those things. So after that, should we be telling the same stories across all of our platforms in our social media? So in our Instagram, our TikToks, our email marketing, is there a way to always repurpose these stories or should we be telling different stories on each platform? Great question. Um, You can tell different stories at different times. It depends a lot on the offering you provide. So if you have multiple products that serve multiple audiences, there are different, there's a bunch of different stories right there um, that you need to kind of be opening and closing at all times. If you, if uh, social media is unique because like on your website, I argue you should be telling one story the whole way down for the most part. Social media though, um, each post, it can kind of relate to a different story. Um, or you can you can tell different stories within one overarching problem. That's completely mm-hmm. fine. You don't have to beat a dead horse um, and do the same problem over and over again. Number one thing I think with with creating social content is before you post it, think: Is this something I want to say, yeah. or is this something I would want to read if I was the consumer? Because oftentimes, as business owners, like we just want to talk about our business twenty four seven because that's because we love it and we're passionate about it. Yeah. And so a lot of times, our motivation for creating content is to just talk about our business, which is all fine and good. But the, the important thing is you can take that same message that you want to send and just invert it a little bit and create a story, a little bit of a story loop with it. And you can say the same things, but it'll connect more with your audience. I like to say, don't waste any interaction with your customer, like if mm. at all. So if you're making it, if you're interacting with your customer, whether it's face to face or over social or at a networking event or a speech you're giving, um, or if you have a, 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 like a bus, bus stop ad, like it doesn't matter what the impression is with your audience, don't waste a single one. And the best way to make sure you don't waste it is by getting good at putting yourself in the position of the person consuming that content. Love that. And I feel like I already know the answer to this, but what is your take on incorporating personal stories in your business marketing? Well, so there's a place and time for it, surprisingly, but there, it, the important thing is it can't be the foundation of your marketing message. You, building trust with our audience comes from um, making statements about what the, the problems they have and the solution they're looking for. That builds trust. What, what also builds trust is having an understanding and an empathy towards our audience and then pair that with the credibility of our, our ability to solve it. So 
a way you can do that would be a personal story to show your understanding and your empathy, a personal story, but it should be about the problems you fought, you solve, you know, um, like, you know, Danielle, you're now like an expert on branding. You can tell a story about the first brand you started and how it was, oh my gosh, it's so challenging to put into yeah. words, you know, a brand, but so tell your story about how you suffered and then make sure to add credibility about it in the end. So you can tell a personal story, but it needs to be like a small percentage of your marketing message. And it should be always every story that you tell should be from a position of empathy and then showcasing how you created your authority in that story. Yeah. So still throw those stories in there, but just, just make sure to use that balance. Yeah, for sure. It is definitely all about the balance. Cause like you said, we don't, always want to hear everything about the business as we want to talk about it. Cause we were so passionate about it, but we do, we're interested as customers. We're interested, but we're more interested in how you can help us solve our business. Yes. Problem. And, and I'll add to that. I don't want, cause I don't want anyone to misunderstand it. If you have a, like, here are the stories you cannot be telling. Like my, my, these are like our core values. Our core values were, were decided because of this or, or um, even, even your story for why you started the company. The, the harsh thing to understand is the sad thing, the hard pill to swallow for our audience is that most of them don't care why we started the company. So the example I get for you isn't necessarily why you started doing what you're doing, but it's your story of overcoming the problem that you saw mm. because it will relate more. So for me, I don't ever say like, I started this because I'm passionate about this and blah, blah, blah. Like what I just say is like, when I started my first company, I could not believe how hard it was to talk about what I did and post about what I did. And I would became obsessed with solving that problem. That's why I became yeah. you know, a, mar a messaging guy. And then I guy. think when your customers come to you or they're more interested in signing on with you, then you get that question of, or how did you get into this? Or why did you get into this? That's kind of your opportunity to share at the deeper meaning of why you did that. If you're your deeper, why? And that I feel in my opinion creates that kind of super fan. Like they're, they're joined in because they resonate even further because they are hearing this personal story. So, but I, I completely agree in, in marketing terms, keep it in that, in that lane that you're talking about. Um, so did you, did I read this correctly that you have experience in public speaking? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhat. So not a, not a huge, huge resume of public speaking, but a major way that I, my marketing is based on doing workshops and I have and like various keynotes on how to solve the problem of your marketing message. Yeah. Is that something again, you always kind of thought you would be doing? I think so in a roundabout way. Like I yeah. used to think that you had to be like a celebrity to be a public speaker. <laughs> so when I was young, I like I emceed like a talent show and did like a bunch of fun stuff that I just loved. And I, and I was like, well, I guess unless I'm famous, I'll never do it again. But the truth is, no, you can talk to a room of 20 people and give a, a little presentation or host a workshop. And that's a ton of fun and equally as rewarding. So yeah. Um, I do have a slight background in, in sports broadcasting, which I loved. And that would be my parallel, my career in a parallel universe. I would want to be like a Monday night football broadcaster that didn't pan out, but that, that kind of my, my speaking scratches that itch a little bit for sure. Gotcha. Any tips for people who might want to get into public speaking in a similar realm that you are? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is it kind of it, it all relates back again to like story stuff. And if you're giving a presentation or a keynote or whatever the dynamic is, even hosting a podcast, so you understand this very well, is you want to just keep talking about the problems you're there to solve. You don't have to if you want to introduce yourself and give a bio and explain why you started your company or why you did what you did and like all the stuff we just spoke about, you can do that at the end. Like the mm. best way to build credibility and as a speaker is just to talk about the problems you're there to fix. Because a lot of times we, we think our customer and the people, the audience, like the person listening to us is like an interrogator and they're there to like, like knock us down. The reality is they're probably there hungry for like what you have. So yeah. the best way to just get off on the right foot is show up and say, Hey, what's up? I'm here to solve this problem. Let's get right to it. You can give your, you know, give like an opening, an opening thesis kind of on what you're doing and then maybe settle into, by the way, my name's Johnny, I do this. And then there's your, or, or even better, you throw it in with the, my name's Johnny. When I started my first company, 
mm. blah, blah, blah. So there you go. You introduce yourself with that empathy element. So I would say the most thing, the most important thing is don't spend a whole lot of time. Like once you have your offering and your expertise dialed in, don't spend too much time trying to communicate the details in front of an audience. Same exact thing we talked about in your marketing message. Just get up there and start addressing the problems you solve. And that will build a ton of clarity, I think, or a ton of trust and then clarity for people yeah. listening to you. That's awesome advice. Thank you. So one thing I ask all of my guests is we define the term on brand here as kind of living authentically to yourself, making choices for yourself and not, not always jumping on those marketing trends, but realizing when it's, and when it's the right fit for you, was there ever a time could be outside marketing could be in life in general, where you're living, not on brand to yourself. And how did you navigate, realize that? And how did you navigate back to your, your path? Dang, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, that is that is good. Um, I think the the further I've gone in my career now, and Grant and and my neighbor has a dog that's barking, so I'm, I apologize for anyone here. All good. Um, hopefully, you can't hear it too bad. But for as I've progressed in my career, and I'm almost 25, I'm not 35 or 40, so I'm I'm still very very new in this. But even in the last three years, I've learned so much about myself and. I think looking back, the moment I was least on brand in, in college, I ran cross country and track and that used to be my life. Like I, and that's, mm. that's where my career first started was working with professional distance runners and which is a small niche market. So no, everyone, no one really realizes that's a thing, but I thought forever, like I was, I was an athlete in college. I was an athlete growing up my next I wasn't good enough to be a pro athlete, but I have a business mind and I'm, and I'm a communicator. So the natural next step is to do business in the sport that I competed in. And as I was doing that, I think looking back and I haven't told too many, I haven't really talked about this a whole lot. Um, probably cause I like block it out, but I do think I was really trying to be something that like I thought I was, mm. but I wasn't. And I have, I have grace on my, for myself with that because I didn't realize that I didn't know it, yeah. but I think I didn't realize I was like back on brand until maybe like a year ago when I realized some of the things that made me a great athlete or great team captain or great leader are the same things that make me great in business. And it takes some time to realize those things, but sometimes you just have to say, um, you know, what am I good at that applies to all sorts of walks of life? And for me, that was yeah. like comforting getting back on brand. It wasn't something new. Once I went with the story marketing, it was, it actually felt like I was at home because I was doing the same types of things I've always right. done just in a different way. Right. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand that in a, in a sense of sometimes we, the lessons we learn come later when we're, we're out of what we were in and in something new and we realize like, okay, we wanted something didn't work out, but I could still pull so many things from that experience into what I'm doing today. So thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that with us. Um, so tell us a little more about where we can find you, where you hang out, where we can get to know you more. And I think you might have a small gift for some listeners. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my website and like everyone says, the cobbler's kid has no shoes. Um, my website is kind of always changing, but my website is southmountainmessaging.com. Um, Instagram, I'm Johnny Holston with no H. So J-O-N-N-Y-H-O-L-S-T-E-N. On TikTok, which I just started trying to be consistent about TikTok, I'm really going to try to just offer a lot of value on there. I don't know if it will, if it will be good for my business or not, but I'll try. Is um, Marketer Johnny. So Johnny with no H again, marketer Johnny. Um, and then LinkedIn, of course, you could just search my name. That is sort of, um, I'm all over those places every day. So if you have any questions, that would be the place to find me. Um, the, then, yeah, the, the gift we've got. So I want to give away three copies of the Building a Story Brand book. Um, it was such an impactful book on me and my, my life, let alone career. And, and Danielle, it sounds like it's been such a huge part of you building this program you're about to launch. And Definitely. so- I'd like to give away three copies of that. So I don't know the best way to do that. Maybe you could just DM me and just refer to this podcast and I'll, I'll send yeah. one of the first three people that do that. DM me or DM Johnny and say, Hey, I want in on that offer and yeah. we'll make, Johnny will make it happen. But yeah, this book was super, just, it was the piece I was missing in opening my mind to the creative, creative piece that I was missing inside marketing and marketing was, I was living and breathing it, but I wasn't living and breathing it in a great way. So this mm. was something to just kind of 
change things up in in a great way. Um, and I'll link all of Johnny's links below too, so you can easily find that in the show notes. But thank you so much for coming on today. I think this was super valuable right up my alley. I know it'll be right up everyone else's, the audience's value as well. Um, any last words, any last piece of advice, anything you want to leave us with today? Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. This was a blast. Um, the biggest thing I think I would like, I like to close with is everybody says like, you have a story to tell. You're living a great story. Go tell your story. I don't disagree with any of those things. Cause what I'm on a podcast telling my story, but in your marketing, you got to remember your customer has a great story. They're living too. They're living just as powerful of a story as you are. So your job as a business owner and CMO, if you don't have a CMO, is to get in there and tell the customer their own story above your own first. So that's kind of yeah. the closing closing thought on all that. But thank you for that's having gonna me. That's going to be the the sound bite in the, uh, Let's in the do social it. media clip. That's <laughs> totally going to be the sound clip. I love that. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. Well, we could, honestly, you get two brand geeks in a room. We could keep going forever. But continue this conversation with us. Through, connect with us on social media, guys. Thank you again, Johnny. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely.